we are going to try again. Um, I've been having some technical difficulties and my microphone stopped working on me, but it looks like it's working right now. So we're going to try to continue the lesson from where we left off. So we were just talking about the three different levels of clouds being zero, alto, and strato. And remembering that we are classifying clouds based on their height and their shape. Right, so right now we're talking about height. So we have really high clouds that are made up of ice crystals because the higher you get, the colder it gets. And um, that's why we don't see these big, fluffy, beautiful, like really juicy looking clouds um, up high because it's too thin and too cold up there. So when you see these high clouds, a lot of times they're called zero something or cirrus clouds because there are, zero means really high, right? And they are wispy and feather-like and really thin. They almost look like paint, stro paint strokes or paintbrush strokes, okay? Or wispy feathers. So those are high clouds. Medium level clouds have that prefix alto, okay? And they can be a combination of water droplets and ice crystals. So we get all sorts of different shapes of clouds in this middle level, but usually they'll have that prefix alto at the beginning to tell you it's in it's a medium level cloud. And then the low level clouds are the really interesting ones. They're the ones that we see closest to our face. They're made up of water droplets and we use the prefix strato, right? So zero alto strato, and those are the low level clouds. Um, so anytime you see strato at the beginning of the word, you know it's a low cloud. Okay, so pause your video, go to your Google form. This is question number two. What is the prefix used to describe high level clouds? And the answer is zero, right? So zero or cirrus clouds are usually very high in the sky. And then we have alto in the middle and strato at the bottom, lowest and closest to us. Okay. Then we can also look at the shape of clouds to classify them. So one part of the cloud's name has to do with its height, how high in the atmosphere it is or in the troposphere. And the second part of a cloud's name has to do with its shape. So we have three main shapes of clouds. Cirrus clouds, cumulus clouds, and stratus clouds. Now you're noticing that these names are really similar to the prefixes that we use for height, right? For height, we said zero, and now we're also seeing cirrus. We also said low clouds are called strato clouds, and now we're also seeing the word stratus, right? So there's some overlap and a little bit of confusion when you're naming a cloud or identifying a cloud. There can be a, just a little confusion between um, whether the word is referring to the height or the shape. Just remember that for the height of the cloud, we use a prefix. So it's going to be the beginning of the word. We'll tell you about the height of the cloud, whether it's low, strato, medium, alto, or high, zero. Okay, and then the root or the main part of the word is going to tell you about its shape. So cirrus clouds, those high clouds are the wispy, feathery ones. Stratus clouds are the low blanket spread out clouds. And then we have my favorite type of cloud and maybe your favorite type of cloud too. Right in the middle, we have cumulus clouds. So cumulus clouds are your classic like Toy Story cloud, right? Big, puffy, fluffy, juicy, bumpy cloud, right? And they are usually the ones that get big and turn into thunder clouds. Okay, so cirrus, cumulus, and stratus, those are the three main shapes of clouds. Okay, so let's go through some examples of different types of clouds, and you'll notice in the names of these clouds that there's two parts, right? Both the shape and the height, right? Height comes first as the prefix, and then the shape of the cloud is the next part of the word. Okay, so we're going either by those prefixes, zero, alto, strato, or the words to define shape, cirrus, cumulus, or stratus. OK, 
Okay, and if I'm going too fast at any point, feel free to pause the video and um, take notes or catch up on anything that you need to. You can always go backwards if you need. Okay, so let's talk about some low level clouds. We have cumulus clouds, stratocumulus clouds, cumulonimbus clouds, just stratus clouds, and nimbostratus clouds. So when you see the word cumulus, that's when you know that we're talking about a cloud that is big, fluffy, and um, really puffy, right? Cotton ball style cloud. So um, a cumulus cloud are large piles of white clouds that can billow high in the sky. So gray layers of cumulus clouds that may cover the whole sky. So they're just low, puffy clouds. And then cumulonimbus cloud. When you see that word nimbus, you should be thinking, uh-oh, that means rain or storm, right? A cumulonimbus cloud or even a nimbostratus cloud are the types of clouds that are going to bring um, lots of rain, maybe even snow or lightning and thunder, okay? So cumulonimbus, that's a thunder cloud. So cumulus are big and puffy. Stratus are when you see the clouds that are like a thick blanket across the whole sky. Okay, they cover the whole sky. Sometimes they bring rain, sometimes they don't. Um, but that is the main difference. So both cumulus and stratus clouds can be low clouds. Notice that they don't all have that prefix strato in front of them. Okay, but if they do have that prefix, that is a clue to tell you that it's a low, low cloud. Okay. So these are the kind of clouds we see low in the atmosphere close to us. So low clouds are mostly composed of water droplets since they're lower down in the atmosphere and they're not usually as cold. Okay, they might sometimes get ice and snow if it gets colder. Okay. I'm sorry, this is taking a second to load. We have cumulus clouds. I'll show you a couple examples of some cumulus clouds, like the classic style of fluffy cloud. There it is. Sorry, computer freezing up here. Hello, computer. Well, while it's taking a second to load, there we go. There's another, oh, good gracious. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. The computer doesn't like how much work we're doing on the computer these days. <laughs> it's definitely complaining of overuse. Okay, so let me just go through these slides pretty quickly. Um, you can pause the video to read the paragraph if you want, but I mostly want to show you the um, images of these cumulus clouds. Okay. So when you have cumulus clouds, they are puffy. There's usually some space between them. Okay, and you can see the sky in between each of those cotton balls. Stratus clouds, on the other hand, are, like I said, that big, thick blanket. Um, it almost looks like fog or when the, just the whole sky looks one color, like the sky is all white or the sky is all gray. That's how you can tell that there's a stratus clouds involved. Okay, and then remember that word nimbo is your clue that there's going to be some kind of precipitation, right? So nimbo stratus clouds form these dark gray layers, right? These dark gray blankets. Okay, so go ahead and pause your video and tell me the answer to question number three on your Google form. What is another name for a storm cloud or a thunder cloud? All right, and then we have our mid-level clouds. Those are gonna have that prefix alto. So alto cumulus clouds or alto stratus clouds. Remember the prefix tells you the height of it. 
So these are medium level clouds. And the second word tells you the shape of it. So we've either got alto cumulus, oops, high, so cirro, alto, or strato, or shape, just cirrus, cumulus, and stratus. Okay, so alto cumulus and alto stratus clouds are our two medium level clouds. Okay. So this is between 6,500 feet all the way up to 23,000 feet. Okay, so it's mostly water, sometimes ice. And here's an example of a difference between alto cumulus and strato cumulus. Okay, so alto cumulus clouds are higher up than the strato cumulus clouds. So cumulus clouds are puffy cotton balls, but they're usually much thicker and much bigger when they're lower down compared to the higher up ones, you can see the alto cumulus clouds are just like little cotton balls, okay? So it says here, you can tell the difference between them. If you hold your arm out to the sky, hold your arm all the way out and look at a cloud in the distance, an alto cumulus cloud is about the size of your thumb when you hold it out to a cloud. And a stratocumulus cumulus cloud is gonna be the size of your fist. So they're much bigger. Oh, gotta love the lag, going great. So there's some alto cumulus clouds, just a picture. Thank you guys for bearing with me as the computer continues to be very slow. Okay, and then we have alto stratus clouds. So again, stratus clouds, you guys know, are the blanket clouds that are nice and thick. Um, alto stratus just means that they're a little bit higher in the atmosphere. Okay, are you starting to get the pattern? So pause your video, go to question number four for me, please, which says, how can you tell the difference between alto cumulus clouds and strato cumulus clouds? Okay. So the main difference, again, is that alto cumulus clouds are smaller, strato cumulus clouds are bigger and puffier. Okay, so once again, we're classifying clouds by their height, either with that prefix zero, alto, or strato, or with shape, right, with cirrus, cumulus, or stratus. Okay, so we're on to our last type of cloud, which is high clouds. So we did those low clouds, middle clouds, and now we're talking about the really high clouds. And all of these high clouds are most look like cirrus clouds, which means we don't get that really puffy, juicy, like big um, cotton ball clouds high in the sky. Normally, we're going to see these thin, wispy, like ripples or feathers. Um, just like strings or strokes of clouds when we're high in the sky. And they all have some form of the word cirrus in them, right? So either cirrus or cirrocumulus or cirrostratus. Let's see if it'll load for us. So high level clouds form all the way above 20,000 feet. And once you get all the way up there, it's actually so cold that most of the clouds are made of little ice crystals, right? Those, that water is not able to stay water droplets. Most of these clouds are made of ice. Okay, so they're thin, they're wispy, they're really high up there. They're the ones that look like, like a horse's tail or like feathers or sometimes like paint strokes. Okay, there we go. There's the picture. So these are the ones that are um, really, really high and out of reach. And um, sometimes they look so thin that you can even just see.
Okay, and when it's a cirrocumulus cloud, that means it's a puffy cloud, but super high up in the sky. So what that ends up looking like are these little ripples, right? Almost like a rib cage or like fish scales, right? So that is when cumulus clouds are super, super high in the sky. And then when stratus clouds, you guys know stratus cloud means a blanket cloud, right? So if you have a zero stratus cloud, that means a blanket of clouds that's really, really high in the sky. So it's usually made of ice crystals because it's so cold up there. Okay, so they're very, very thin, little, like a sheet of clouds that's high in the sky. Okay, so pause your video for question number five. What do high level clouds usually look like? high level clouds usually look like. Okay, so clouds have a lot to do with the weather that we experience on Earth. The sun makes Earth warmer and when there are many clouds the sun is blocked which cools the Earth and clouds also bring all the precipitation that we know, rain, snow, hail, and sleet. Clouds can tell us what kind of weather to expect. So when you see stratus clouds, you can expect a drizzle or a light rain. Stratocumulus clouds mean snow or drizzle. Alto cumulus clouds tell us that the weather can change, um, maybe in a few days, but not right away. And then the cumulonimbus clouds, that brings those thunderstorms, right? Cumulonimbus. When you see that nimbus, that means storm, right? So all of these different types of clouds um, there are even more types of clouds than what I mentioned today, but this is just a basic breakdown, basic introduction to an important part of our atmosphere, right? Clouds, we either classify by how high up in the atmosphere they are or what type of shape they are, okay? All right, so that is where we're going to end for today. You are ready to take your DOL at this point, um, so if you could please make sure that you have filled out the entire during class form with all of those questions, those five questions that we answered today. And then you may get started on DOL and pop in and ask me any questions if you have them. Okay. All right. Love you and talk to you later.